Hi everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a simple card featuring a single color scheme. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm working on a card project, color schemes will overwhelm me. And I believe that monochromatic schemes are a great solution for a card that is just gonna work. So let's take a look at the products I'm using today. This little picture book crab was the inspiration for this card. This is new from Simon Says Stamp, and I really wanted to work with that, as well as some of these new uplifting sentiments. The thing that's kind of cool about this set is there are a lot of fantastic sentiments, and they all have a really different style and vibe, which is kind of cool for a single set. I will also be using some heart dies from Hero Arts, very small ones, and a brush brush stroke waves stencil from Studio Katya to create a little purple ocean using Dusty Concord. This is a new Distress Oxide. Got a little uh, jumbo sponge dauber, and I'm going to be using some Brutus Monroe white. It's the alabaster embossing powder and some Versamark. I've got some micropore tape and some purple tape. I've got a single Copic marker, not doing any blending, but you'll see how I use this in a little bit. Some liquid glue and foam squares and some scissors. And of course, I've got cardstock. I'm using Plum Punch from Gina K Designs and a little bit of Nina Solar White in the 80 pound. Plus, I'm using some of this glitter cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. Again, in the same color scheme that this entire card is going to be, which is purple, and the Misty tool. I love my Misty. I recently met the owner and inventor, and it was an exciting day because she's a genius. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on the card. First thing I'm going to do is tape down the Nina Solar White. Tape down my brush stroke waves stencil. I have to say that slow, cannot say it fast. And I'm just gonna load up my dauber with a little ink and try to work in a circle in the center of this piece of cardstock because all I want to have is a little wave area to ground my title and my little crab. So the stencil is really nice. You can flip it and move it around and add waves and that looked good to me. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm just going to lightly go in and sort of fill in a circular area so you have a little bit of light and dark. Now I got some ink where I didn't want it, and so I just took a mono sand eraser, and that thing works great. It takes the Distress Oxide ink right off. All right, setting that aside. I'm going to die cut my crab, and again, I know crabs aren't purple, I get it, but here's the thing about when you, when you pick a color scheme and you're monochromatic, it's fun to make a purple crab. Do you know what I mean? If you want a pink crab, if you want a blue crab, whatever color you want, you get to do that, and then that will inform the rest of your choices. Now, I like to take my picture book little guys and tape them together like this. I use micropore tape. The reason I use this tape, it's really thin. It's not goopy. It's not going to get in the way of anything, especially if you don't pop up your characters. But see, I like to pop them up. So I take as much tape as needed to layer on the back so that my little crab, his body, stays together, top and bottom. There he is. Now I've also gone ahead and run through the crab again with a little Nina Solar White just for those dots, just for his eyes. And then I did a little scrap of some Simon cardstock just in Simon Black to get more dots because I want to layer the eyes a little bit. So I'm taking a little more of the micro pour and I'm using my craft pick because my, my fingers are just too big to do this, right? I'm flipping over the crab and placing the sticky side so that it will be facing the reverse when you flip them over. It, it, it's all... <laughs> It's all going to make sense because now when I flip him over, I've got that adhesive on the back and I can go ahead and take the eyes and just place them right in there and they have something to stick to, which is the micropore tape. Now it is hard to, get, it is hard to get these little suckers off. I swear, I feel like, a, like I could go into watchmaking. If you can make cards with little things like this, you could fix a watch because I really feel like half the time when I'm doing this, I can't see. So the craft pick is really helpful in 
clearing and poking things down and yeah, yeah. So now I just added a little liquid adhesive to take the black eyes and sort of offset them a little bit because I thought this would be kind of cute. I had to move that one over because that looked like crazy eyes right there. But you know, just, just seeing a little, little white there, the whites of their eyes, the whites of the crab's eyes. Yeah. But now here's the thing. I wanted to have a two-tone crab, but I didn't have the right shade of cardstock. This plum punch is a really cool color, and so my solution was to take this single Copic marker I think it's R89. It's a deep plum purple-y tone and just color the bottom to create a tone that would work with the plum. See how that works? And it, it actually lightens up just a tiny bit when it's dry. That was my solution to keep it in the same color family. So now that my panel has fully dried, I'm going to give it a good coating of embossing magic um, just because I don't want powder to stick anywhere it shouldn't stick. And I'm going to line up my sentiment, which is the I Heart You. Pick that up with the Misty Door and give it a nice good ink up with Versamark, the clear sticky ink that is the magical thing that it is. Going to give it a good press down here and really transfer that ink. I figured I could only, I, that I only needed to stamp it once and you can kind of see the watermark there. Now I'm just going to pour over some of this Brutus Monroe Alabaster powder. It's white, it's a fine detail, and I, this has become a favorite. I've used this probably in the last three card videos that I've done white and embossing. It's fantastic powder. Fantastic powder, I really like it, so might have to get some more and put it in a big tub. But now I'm just going to heat set that sentiment, and you can kind of see here, the paper tends to warp a little. Uh, it kind of depends. The 80 pound does warp, and you can kind of see that bend, right? So one of the things I do, I have this book and I just stick it in between the pages of this book and stick it under something heavy. Now, another thing you can do is just put your, whatever your piece is, in between a piece of clean folded white cardstock or copy paper. And you can also run it through your die cut machine. But if I have time, I just do this. Just let it sit. While I'm waiting, I'm going to take my little strip of the glitter cardstock and run that through. I got this in a multi-pack from Simon and they come in these six by six sheets and you can get you can get a lot out of this pack and there's so many colors. I just thought this added just the right amount of shine and kind of glitz to a very very simple card design and also keeping it in the color scheme. Now I'm going to load up the back of my crab with some thin foam adhesive and again, this is also just cutting tiny little pieces. And I thought I would show you, it's not the most exciting thing, but you really do need to cut small pieces. And this is where a craft pick is a really helpful tool because I can't see <laughs> over my fingers to put those little pieces down. So everything's getting popped up with little tiny pieces. Again, watchmaking, it's in my future. So I am going to get those all set up and set that aside while I prepare the rest of the card. For the card base, it is the Plum Punch from Gina K Designs. It's going to be top folding, five and a half tall by four and a quarter wide, and this is a fantastic color. I don't know why I've been so into purple, but this purple is just crazy gorgeous. And I've gone ahead and trimmed off about a quarter of an inch from each side of the panel with the sentiment. But the panel itself was just a tiny bit too long. I must have trimmed it incorrectly. So I'm going to cut like a sixteenth of an inch off. And now I'm going to take a piece of fun foam and just adhere it to the back of the panel. And it also, by doing this, it helps to give a nice even dimension and helps it to feel less or actually be less warped. And then I'll just use a little liquid adhesive. This is uh, Lawn Fawn glue onto the fun foam itself. And that makes it really easy to line it up on the panel with that purple kind of framing each side. The last thing to do is add my purple crab and layer in the hearts. Now I put a piece of foam adhesive on the outside of the heart because I wanted it to look like the crab was holding the heart, but I wanted it popped up on the same plane. Isn't that cute? Just a little glue. I thought it was really cute because his he's got the, you know, the pinchers. They're called pinchers. And now little glitter heart up top 
and one more to the outside because three is a magical number in design. And that is my finished card project. Completely monochromatic, takes all the stress out. What color goes with purple? I don't know, doesn't matter because I'm just using purple. So if you are challenged by color, take the monochromatic, well, challenge and pick a color you love and build an entire card project around that color. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you back here again with another card project soon. Have a great day.